Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insight through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Betsy Wiersma, who is a serial social entrepreneur, artist, marketer, podcaster, author, community organizer, strategic philanthropist, and relentless cheerleader. Betsy is known for big idea thinking and her ability to rally people around a common cause. After years of service in the national events industry, Betsy now focuses on Wiersma Experience Marketing, her consulting and event marketing company in Denver, Colorado. Betsy is also a TEDx speaker, and her 17-year-old campus experience network has raised over $1 million in cash and in-kind support for women's charities in Colorado and around the world. We have so much to talk about today. Welcome, Betsy. Well, thank you. I know people are like, yeah, sure. She didn't do all that. She would be dead. <laughs> but um, I, I am dead, kind of, because I do have a, a lot that I pack into my days. So thank you. I'm so excited to be with you, Summer. Thank you so much. So before we actually dive into your professional background, can you give us a picture of where you grew up, your biggest influences over the years, and a challenge in your youth that you overcame, which had an impact on your future? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. That's kind of, can you say your life story in an interesting way? (laughs) Um, You know, so I think if I was thinking about me as an outsider, I would introduce myself as the Girl Scout that showed up on your door, but not just with my badge and my cute outfit. I had a wagon and in the wagon, I had giveaway prizes. And when you bought cookies from me, not only did you get a handmade thank you note, you got some kind of special thing from the prize bag. Um, you know, after Girl Scouts, it was the junior float. And I went to Dairy Queen and figured out that the demographic of juniors working on the float ate a lot of blizzards. So I got Dairy Queen to give us the blizzard coupons and a couple hundred bucks to pay for the potato chips. So you're getting the picture. <laughs> uh, I didn't know I was marketing. I thought I just was having fun. And so I grew up in an entrepreneurial household in Indianapolis, Indiana in the Midwest. So my dad worked, uh, he was a salesman and my mom was at home with us when we were young and then worked when we were a little bit older. So I just, my dad said, don't lie, cheat or steal or hang around with anybody that does and you can do anything, honey. Mm -hmm. And I believed him. I believed him. We had three girls. I was the middle girl and I just kept making up businesses, selling bead bracelets in fourth grade. We made $40 profit. You know, like I just kept saying, let's have some fun. So I think I'd be like the little engine that could, um, that chugged through some low self-esteem issues from being chubby and not being, you know, popular like the cheerleaders by kind of overcompensating with, uh, yeah, but I am a blast. And, you know, hang around with me because I will entertain you. Um, So I think, you know, that that little girl inside is still here today. And um, thank goodness at the ripe old age of 60, I'm kind of finally getting uh, more of enoughness and not quite have to perform so much. But I think um, I think I was that kid that tried to get attention in a positive way by helping others, Uh, you know, and that showed up in many places. Well, Thank you for answering that question. It sounds like you figured out what your challenges were and you overcame that and you maybe overcompensated, but at the same time, it got you through, it got you through your journeys. And you also were able to say, I'm here, I'm alive. I'm curious. I'm doing what I love. I'm passionate about, and I love your spirit. You have an incredible background from author, entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, art and clothing designer, podcaster, event organizer, and on and on and on. So how did you develop such passion and purpose in your life, a life of purpose? You talk about this. So can you just expand on that just a bit? Sure. So if you take that kid that started in Girl Scouts, and remember, you 
in Girl Scouts, just like in school, you had a goal, then you made your tactics, right? Sell cookies, make the prizes, write the thank you notes, get the wagon. Then you did the action. You did the plan. You took the wagon to the neighbor, got the thing. Then you had to do completion, follow up, deliver cookies. And then you had your measurement. How many cookies did I sell? And I think I started that cadence of project management when I was a kid, when I didn't even know that, you know, I was gifted with a way to kind of see all these details and put them in a way to get there. So I just started doing that. Right. And, and that became fun for me. Like, what can we dream? What can we imagine? How do we get there? So how do we make a plan to get there? You know, as I grew up, how do we budget for time and resources that we need to get there? And then how do we do it with style and make memories and have fun? And then how do we measure and evaluate and rinse and repeat? And go back. So I found my life kind of being all that cadence of work in different ways. And so I wandered into marketing, communication, graphic design, art, special events that are all things that I loved that I could kind of curate together to create amazing memories for people and really break through special events. So after going to Purdue University and graduating in 1983, I was honored to work for the governor of the state of Indiana, and I got to go to seven different agencies. So now I was a new kid right out of college, and I just started to see how does this project management fit in transportation? How does it fit in highway department? How does it fit in the um, tourism department where I got to do a little TV show? I started to take my curiosity to many different ways. So I think that that kind of just bloomed into different seasons of my life where I've done it differently, but done the same kind of thing. Dream big, gather the team that everybody can win and kind of go toward a common goal, make a plan that everybody gets to have a part that they can be juicy and excited about. Do it with style, like don't be boring, like really leave your mark and then celebrate everybody's role at the end. And uh, so that translated into my special event business that I started in uh, 1985 and then still have today. And that's, you know, then in recently uh, gyrated into my art on purpose business, which is the clothing line, art products and ways to inspire. Now, we are going to talk more about all of that, but I want to ask you a question since you do so much. So how do you juggle so much every day? Oprah says you can have it all, just not all at once. How do you have it all at the same time? <laughs> well, okay. You are living <laughs> a dream that I have it all at the same time. So, so what I noticed is, you know, for me, I put in the baseline of the main gig, the common passion, right? So for 17 years now, I built the Camp Experience Network, 5,000 plus women in Colorado, but around the world on purpose for good. We say, do good, have fun. So that was kind of the baseline. That's what I always kept every single ball in the air. And then I built around that. Here's a speech, here's a consulting gig, here's a trip and a workshop, here's an art workshop, right? But every day I kept the balls in the air for the Camp Experience Network. Now, the other thing about me is I have to stretch, I have to breathe, I have to do the balance part to keep my life alive. So there's no negotiation about getting up an hour and a half early to be sure I do my yoga and center. There's no negotiation about nighttime prayer and gratitude. You know, those are the things I have to put in place as buffers for my humanness, you know, to do this. And then if there's a moment, I am not watching a Netflix series unless I happen to be embroidering on something or, you know, making an art design. I am not idle. And I got that from my dear mother, Norma. So um, I love to create and have fun. And so I just stick it all in, in the middle, in the juicy middle. Well, but I like the foundation and the foundation from which you build. And so there's always a core theme. And so when you have that core theme and you can go back to that, there's so much building that can be done. And I also love that you stay curious, you stay curious, which is fantastic. So you've also done a TEDx speak and you talk about choose your family, change your life. Tell us about that. Well, so I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, mostly, and then went to a state school in Indiana, Purdue University. So I had this kind of tight knit group of friends, right, that were all in Indiana until I didn't because I sold my event business and moved to Dallas, Texas. And the only thing I had were water bugs that were huge and that were always in my pantry, scaring the bejesus out of me. And I had one friend in Dallas, Texas. So, you know, I 
realized that I had to find family that wasn't physically located in my community. In Dallas, it was just the one friend and a couple friends I made along the way. I was only there a year. Um, But as I moved to Denver and then dated the cute boy that became my husband and started to put some roots down here, I decided, man, I got to find some cool women. And I was 38 years old, not a friend in sight, didn't know anyone in Denver and started over. So I found that by curating friends that were like-hearted, wanted to help others, wanted to have fun, didn't take themselves too personally, you know, didn't hurt others, you know, were kind. By curating that group, I started to make like-hearted friends, and then we had fun together. So that was the start of the Camp Experience Network. Let's find women who wanted to help others do good, have fun. And from that, we're going to make friendships and do business things. And that started the camp network. So the whole Ted talk was about after 15 years of doing this, that you have your, your biological, physical family. And I said, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Right. Right. So you're either close to them or you're not no judgment. You're, you know, sisters, brothers, mom, dad, whoever are either like you and they like the things you do, or maybe you're not like in my family, no one's traveled the world. No one would create businesses for fun. You know, they were, <laughs> that's just not their jam, but I love them. They're just not like me in that way. So mm-hmm. I found in the Camp Experience Network, building that network, that as you chose your family, you picked your sisters, that they became close and became able to support you and be on the journey with you. And by that, you can change your perspective and not feel alone because there's always someone else looking for a sister and someone else who will equally support you as you support them. Oh my gosh. You know, that resonates with me. Oh, I know. This is like who are women is all about and being a military spouse. I align with what you just said is you choose your family. So your biological family is such that they're there, whether or not they like you. Okay. You know, and you embrace them and you know, you love them for who they are, but you also have the opportunity along your journey to have those meaningful relationships that you call family. They are your family and you start building each other up and you're there as a community. So that absolutely resonates with me. So thank you for sharing that. You have so many projects going on. What is that one project you are currently putting a majority of your time and energy and effort into? Well, I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> I had this wild idea. So, so really two things, and it's important for the dynamics. First, I had prayed for many, many years. You know, what happens to camp experience? I turned 60 this year. I've been doing this 17 years. We've raised a million dollars. I have contractors and a volunteer staff that serves as a, you know, like a board, a committee. I, I never had a lot of help and it really, really, really was getting heavy through COVID and all the things we had to do to, you know, to kind of the, the big word pivot, right. to pivot oh. during COVID ah. oh, oh. <laughs> uh, because we were live events people. So we had events during COVID. We had a masquerade in masks, have a ball. We had our camp in COVID. So that was a heavy lift. So yeah. during this process, the blessing of COVID was a wonderful woman event planner came along and started to take some things off my plate and help me. So starting in 2022, she has taken the lead as the director of the Camp Experience Network here in Colorado. So I can be the founder. And that is a huge shift because I can do what I love, build it up, get the sponsors, sell the memberships, you know, really help be part of the the programming, but I'm not running the back office, the staff the marketing, the social media, the newsletter. So that freed up a God space that has been huge. And so just on a whim, I made one jacket out of my artwork and wore it as a duster at the fall camp. And everybody was like, that is the cutest thing. What is that? What is that? I'm like, well, it's a duster of my artwork. So then I got really bold and I took $2,000 and I bought a series of things out of my artwork and put them in a party and invited all my friends and said, see what you think. And I sold a bunch. They loved it. So I'm like, okay, I took all that money, put it back in. And now I'm starting some home shows and some events where people can buy this, what I call art on purpose. It's clothing that says happy and inspire and dream and found. And then it's beautiful paintings that just light up your day. So you can get them in a scarf, a poncho, a duster. Um, I have a manufacturing partner out of Montreal that's making it. And then I have some things 
things that are leggings and yoga pants and skirts, a manufacturer in North Carolina, and tennis shoes. Oh my gosh, I have four brands of tennis shoes and they're all super fun. So I'm just tiptoeing into the water of home shows and a fashion line. And if anyone listening is the person I'm looking for to help me, please find me because it is not from my experience, it's from my heart. I'm doing this gig. So entrepreneur, uh, absolutely. And I have two big clothing racks in the basement. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is so amazing. So you brought into that entrepreneurship, sisterhood, creativity, your art, you're curating a project again. I mean, this is just incredible. You have done so much over your life. And I love how all these skills built on one another. And yet you go back to that same core of strategizing, of building a project, bringing community together. And this again is something that does that. So bravo to you, Betsy. This is amazing. Well, um, Summer, I have to tell you, you know, a little part of my backstory that kind of drives me. And that is March 21st, 1983. I was in college at Purdue and we all had gone to a dance the night before and we had leftover beer. And so our (laughs) our big idea, right? I'm horrified because I have a 19 year old daughter now. Our big idea was to go in a blizzard in the middle of the night at two in the morning with the beer to go snowmobiling in a farmer's Ah. field an hour away from the university, because that sounds like a really good idea. And you know, when I look back, the truck didn't start that night. We even had to make the extra effort to jump the truck so we could go wait for it in a blizzard snowmobiling in the middle of the night with the extra beer. And so there was about seven of us that went and um, one group was on one snowmobile and we were on a snowmobile with a sled, two and two, right? And this big burly farmer guy named Paul Helmick was sitting in front of me holding the beer and I was sitting behind him and we said, wait, this is really dumb. He should be on the back and then should be me and I will hold the beer. So we pulled off the road in the blizzard at two in the morning, an hour from Purdue University in the middle of the night. And change places, right? And put Paul in the back, then me in the beer. We pulled back onto the road. And unfortunately, our friends were going down the road 60 miles an hour and hit us Mm -hmm. in the back, killing Paul and throwing me down the road 78 feet, scraping off my face and leaving us in the dark with two broken snowmobiles at two in the morning, an hour outside of our university in the middle of a blizzard. So waking up after 21 days in intensive care, they thought I was brain dead. They thought I would never walk again. Um, you know, it's really a traumatic story. I, I wrote about it in our the book that I did called mm-hmm. The Stew. And um, it's just really drives who I am because I treat each day like a gift. And it's such a miracle, number one, that I survived, number two, that I'm okay, and number three, that I'm here to serve a super, super big God in a, any way I can. So um, that really is what drives me. It's like, what kind of fun can I have today? And if I'm done, that was awesome. Yeah. Rinse and repeat. Let's try it again. Well, thank you for sharing that story. That's impactful and that is meaningful. And that will really make you think about your intentional living, life on purpose, meaning, intention, and moments. Moments matter. Moments count. So thank you so much for sharing that story because that does give us a bit more insight about who you are and why you do what you do. So thank you for that. But as we come to the close of our interview, and we've talked about so much, and I want to thank you for being here. If you were to leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would they be? Well, I would tell everybody, yes, you can. Anything is possible. Everything you've heard about in this interview, I just created a dream and took some steps, gathered some great people and tried. So be possible create a big story that yes, you can and live your dreams. It is possible. And let's go do this together. Thank you, Betsy, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. I am happy to be here. And anyone who needs love and support, find me Betsy at BetsyWearsma.com. There's all kinds of online classes. There's fun art, anything you need. I am here to serve. Thank you so much. You can connect and follow Betsy Wiersma on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and at BetsyWiersma.com. 
Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great. Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.